Yeah, it turns out. It also <laughs> turns out running this business is more than I ever expected it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I've never heard anybody say the opposite. Like, yeah, you know, my own company's less work than it should have been. Well, you know, I I wish I had. I mean, we can discuss this. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, well, Chris. Let's, yeah, well, let's we're at three years of podcasting. And I didn't realize how much work that was going to be. So yeah. I completely understand. So, yeah. all right. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Author It Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Doug DeMuro. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. As always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was mandated and cool. <laughs> Ross is in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. And Doug's all the way on the West Coast. So we're back to our normal mm-hmm. stretched out boundary. That's normally our time zones, our Eastern, Central, and Pacific. So, Right. It's a good <laughs> setup. It's easier, yep. it's easier to be six feet, but you guys are like a thousand miles each, 1,500 miles. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, uh, 1400 range. Yep. Yeah. I think I referred to something the other day for Ross and how many days it would take him to drive somewhere. <laughs> then again, yeah. I, that was back when Brad Brunel was like, that. yeah, swing by the place in Reno, grab something. I was oh, like, Brad, God. you're 24 hours away from me and I'm in the Midwest. <laughs> like, Brad, no. Brad's mentality is, oh yeah, it's uh, it's 2,100 miles away. That is 2.623 days on my motorcycle. Well, we're talking to the only other person I know who drives the most cross country right now. So. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. And you come like straight through my neck of the woods all the time. Yeah, and, uh, every summer we we I drive out, and every summer I drive back. My dog and me. You mean you don't like Nantucket in the Northeast in the middle of January? You know, I would, love, dude. You joke, but I if it was up to me, I would live in the Northeast. I would move literally tomorrow. If my wife came upstairs Man. right now during this podcast and was like, "Hey, you want to move back to the East Coast?" I'd be like, I'd be like, guys, I'm out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. No. <laughs> how long? Back. How long? Okay. So, so Chris's wife is from New York, and obviously we're from here. How long has it been since you li- since you lived in in the Northeast? Well, for I lived winter? in Philly. I lived in Phil- Okay. So I grew up in Denver. It should be clear. So I, winters don't really phase me. Like I, I grew up in Denver. I lived in Atlanta, which has more serious winters than people realize. But then I'm ice, to, ice, ice baby. It has ice and it gets cold. And then I moved to, to, and it gets gray, which is really the most annoying part of winter. And then I lived in Philly for four years, but it's been four years, four winters since I've had winter, but mm-hmm. I don't, winter, I'm like, I'm all set. I'm fine. Okay. Winters in the, we, in the last like five years, we've had one good snowy winter and the rest of the winters have just been like dreary, rainy, <laughs> like, like Seattle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, it it's uh, who you are in Connecticut. I'm assuming you're near the Long Island Sound, like every like most people who live in Connecticut. Like, yes. it's not so bad, right? If you're upstate New York, we saw what can happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Western PA yeah. or anything like that. But like, you yeah, know, I, if you, I would move to DC and I could, oh, I would give anything. But that ship has sailed. I've lost that fight. It's over. And I, it's hard <laughs> to complain because it is 70 degrees every <laughs> single day here. And it's perfect for my job. So that's you. That's you. Chris and I talk about weather. Uh, weekly almost daily and it's like yeah you know shooting car reviews and and taking pictures isn't really conducive to you know no. the, the Connecticut lifestyle or Kansas City, Kansas City has or KC KC's got some of the worst weather because you have incredible heat and you have like <laughs> significant snow and the combination of both is tough it the nice thing about it is it is a true mix that's that's a good like it, Positive spin on oh, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take the good like, with the bad. You always hear those stories about people that live somewhere there and they're like, oh, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. I feel like I feel that's like that's always stuff. embellished for other places, but where it's literally within a series of hours, it can go from 60 to like 25 degrees. And mm-hmm. you were just like, what happened? Like, yeah. and actually that's a bad example because the one that comes to mind, it was 85 degrees one day and the next day the high was like 15. And yep. so you were like, Hold up, that's legit summer temps to dead of winter temps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I feel we're, that we're, we'll do <laughs> weather stuff later. Ross, I you have an update. It's show. exciting. I have a few updates. Do I have exciting updates? This I is, think it's exciting when uh, you say it because Doug doesn't know what you're going to mention. This is news to me. Oh, okay. So I have bought a Land Rover Defender. Uh, oh boy, what? Which one? Everybody is holding their breath. I'm. And- I'm Literally, it's the computer taking so not long what you're expecting. 
Nice. That's I an have, excellent uh, Land Rover Defender. I yeah. Have, yeah. I have purchased a miniature Land Rover Defender. It is a Traxxas TRX 4M. Um, yeah. I have been interested in RC stuff since I was a small child and had uh, more X mods than any person should ever have. So incidentally, I went off-roading in Western Massachusetts, I don't know, uh, four or five months ago. And the trails that I was doing in the GX and with my Tacoma World buddies, there were a few guys there and they had these RC crawlers. I was like, wait a minute, this is actually really cool. Yeah. So, so I bought this thing. Uh, it's a one eighteenth scale crawler, and it actually it has like you know real suspension, Probably, solid yeah. axles, locking diffs, sway bars, and everything. Um, and you know when it's ten degrees and windy here, I can use it in my living room. Right. Um, so I I enjoyed um, the the group text the other day with you and our other friends who were also had purchased some of these things. I was like, okay, nerds, yeah. like I dude. And I'm sure it's cool for whatever reason, I can't get behind the RC movement of automotive stuff because it's like so much maybe. And I think it's a personal thing where I haven't done enough with real life stuff mm -hmm. or like the full size. I shouldn't say real life because both of them are in real life. <laughs> this is, with the full size. I haven't done enough full AI. size stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that I'm yeah, then like, I, all right, cool. Like I, can I had to this. explain it to my wife because I've never seen her look at me with the, you are such a loser eyes the way that she did when oh. I started playing with this. <laughs> um, but it's okay. So it's the Northeast. There's days when it's 10 degrees and there's 30 yeah. mile per hour winds. And I'm, and there are people who go off roading. I am not one of those people. I fucking hate the cold. Um, so if I can set up a little course in my office or my living room, and I can simulate the obstacles that I <laughs> have had trouble with in the past. It's it's like video games, but tangible, you know? So yeah. those things are so cool. I actually follow a bunch of Instagram accounts devoted specifically to that, those defenders, because it's based that one's based on the NAS 110 with the external cage. And it just like looks so cool. Dude, and I'm like so for it. packs and yeah. uh, a mock high lift on it. I, I like, will say you can modify I do get, them. It's so cool. I get sucked into those accounts that make it look Real, like it's yeah. full size or yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh, and then you're man. scrolling through the the Instagram thing and you there's like a you know a, a story comes up and you're like, oh, that looks interesting. You click on it, it's like, wait a minute, this is fake. It's exactly. Only, it yes. pulls out and you see that they're like in a parking lot. And it's like, oh God. There is there. a guy who recently did the Camel Trophy Defender to look exactly like the real Camel Trophy one. It's, yeah. it's such a black hole. It's it's just another like subset of this stupid off-roading that we yeah. all love so much. Yeah. 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 And it's the same here. We can't, you know, in the middle of the summer, it's too hot. Like people go out in the desert, like where I live, it's the coast and it's like fine. Always the temperature is always fine. But all the people here go out in the desert. And you, you, my friends stop doing that in April and don't start up again until October. So you kind of got to have something to do. Now here, what we it's do is we have sports place. cars. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's literally up. here. We yeah. have sports cars and drive those in the summer. But in Connecticut, <laughs> in the winter, you, that's not a feasible opportunity. So au contraire, I have done so with multiple sports cars. Yeah, but probably Miata very, with winners. Yes, I imagine. Yeah, Miata Challenger. Uh, no, just those actually. That that accounted for five winters over the last, geez. including winter tires. Eight so you years. actually had a lot of fun. yeah, the the best. There's nothing better than sports car and winter tires when it's like slightly slick outside. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So that's the Defender update, and we'll probably cover the upgrades as we go along on that. Um, <laughs> Two other quick updates. Upcoming press vehicles are very exciting, and we'll talk about these on, on future shows. Hummer EV arrives this week, which is replaced the week after by the CT5V Blackwing, and they swap that out for a 130, Defender 130, and then Yukon Denali. So I have a very I'm good... Very, of very all of those, January the February. only one I'm interested in is the 130. The 130... I am keen to see in person and skeptical of what my eyeballs may or may not decide. I think it's the ugliest car on sale. <laughs> <laughs> I think the that is a bold statement. The regular Defender is already kind of questionable. And I say that having owned it for two and a half years and driven 50,000 miles. Like every time I look, come up to it to this day, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But the 130 looks like my car wearing a backpack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is the Sorry. 500X still on sale? 
Uh, I don't think so. You thought the 500X was uglier? That car was so... No, I, isn't Fiat like totally out of the US market? Aren't they like gone, gone? I thought Ooh. they were supposed to be coming back with like a... Look at that. Look at that ridiculous thing. Oh. That absurd yeah, re- so, so they didn't the... lengthen the wheelbase at all. They just said, no, they did here's it an extra row. Right, they did it cheaply. And you know, the funny thing is the 110 already has a third row. So this is just a longer third right. row. But they did it cheaply that, yeah, there's no wheelbase extension like there was on those Trailblazer EXT. You remember that? Like, the Dude, GX- I was literally going to say the Envoy XUV and all of those. Yeah. Yeah, those yeah, yeah. Stretched in the middle. This is not. This yep. is stretched in the back. It's like a bad render. I think <laughs> it's famous. <laughs> well, I, uh, my, my one comment is that the, uh, the departure angle yeah. might leave That's something over. to be desired. That's over. So, yeah. We'll see if I smack it on my driveway. But yeah, those those are the uh, the upcoming. That's a lot of glass roof in in their favor. I think, Dude, I think honestly, part of it is that we already are accustomed to the regular wheelbase. I actually think if this had come out like earlier or at the same time, it wouldn't be so bad. But looking at it now, you have spent two and a half years seeing the regular ones on the road, and then you see that, and it's mm-hmm. like, what? But like when you look at a Yukon versus a Suburban, you don't have this thought because we're like no. used. To it. Maybe it's. Maybe it's just like going to take some time, but I think it's, it's like they put it on the copy machine and pushed a hundred and uh, hundred and thirty percent, but only on the back <laughs> section, <laughs> only on the ass. <laughs> right. So yeah, so that uh, only other short small update is, I mean, Chris and I've been talking about this for eons now. I'm still up in the air whether I keep the GX or get rid of the GX, and the decision is basically keep the GX or get rid of it. And replace it with like a 200,000, 175,000 mile ish 200 series. Um, not sure. Just not sure. I love my 200. It's great. It's been great. The, yeah. The, but my GX has 32,000 miles. What year? 18. And so it's you, got a, it's got so much. It's got, I mean, uh, Toyo sent me tires, Warren sent me a winch, Light Force sent lights. Like there's an Iron Man bumper and suspension. Yeah. You know, tire carrier on the back door. Um, yeah. The the dash cam that Glucker sent me definitely not like eight months ago has I installed last week because it definitely didn't sit in the box in my garage for for a few months before I remembered that it was there. <laughs> um so it's like starting from scratch with a with a vehicle much older, but you know much more or just do you think it's much more it's 25 percent. like i've oh, off-road rather, a little... rather have a low mileage like the gx is still a v8 body on frame it's everything that everybody likes about the 200 yeah. but you have like it's low miles and newer the the two big questions in this larger question are that the four six is inferior to the five seven there's no oh, in, in terms of like power longevity and, of, really interesting yeah. I, didn't yeah. I mean the 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 four six is like a 250 275 thousand mile engine and the five seven is like add 50 to seventy five thousand miles to that which isn't really a problem for me because i work from home and you it know? only has thirty thousand miles on it so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. i bought it at 27 <laughs> so, so really yeah. that's some yes okay. that's that's a wash um, yeah <laughs> yeah see i i think doug's on team keep it yeah i have a 200 and i love it but it it hasn't quite been what i expected it to be and i think the 200 has like more, there's more like lore around it than reality i think really um i don't well, think that there's a dramatic difference from the gx and the L- and the 200 in terms of like what they can do if that makes mm-hmm. sense Okay, that's Plus, fair. I mean, yeah, that looks so cool. And you've 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 already improved the the only bad part about that GX, which is that heinous front end. Oh my god, it was so bad, <laughs> man. I Fuck. drove the first few days. I walked out to it, and I was like, "Nope, not it's not staying like this." Oh bad. <laughs> so you're gonna have to yeah, Batman uh, it in. I mean, it's it, it, and I, I owe money on the GX, and I can potentially eliminate that by getting out of it. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. And could, two hundreds are going down in value so slowly. True, that is true. So yeah, it, we'll see. It, it's the last lane cruiser. Probably like, gonna stay. It's the two hundred, like for now. <laughs> yeah, for, for some now. BS thing, but it's the last real lane cruiser. I bet. Yeah. yeah. I, by the way, I love the three hundred. I think. I mean, the LX three hundred is great. 
but like I drove a Toyota 300 and it was so great. I just so sad we don't get that. It's such a shame. But so whatever. that was on the on the list of things we wanted to talk about. And we have a, 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 a not small list of things yeah. to talk about. Right. So you've driven what is effectively three 300 series. You've driven the Sequoia, the LX600, and you got your hands on a, a real LC300, right? Yeah, and a Tundra, yeah, so. Oh, and, and my, uh, is, uh, <laughs> continue. I, I Ross isn't when, a big fan of the Tundra. Uh, I had some issues. Tundra, but continue. But you don't like how it looks or did it have a problem or something? Um, it felt unfinished. It was, I got to bite my tongue because I fuck, I love Toyota. I've had five, if not Did six. Did you drive a Lexus? Calm down. I Yeah, but like, <laughs> the, and I have put more miles on the prior Tundra than I can count. Um, it just, it, was poorly sprung for the weight and even more poorly sprung when I put weight in the bed. Yeah. And it compared to like a uh, Ram 1500, which I put the same mileage on and hauled the exact same quad on. Um, it just, it felt under engineered. Which yeah, is I, mean, I think it's become clear that Toyota's kind of realized they're never really going to, from a capability perspective, they're never really going to outshine like the guys who are committed to it. And mm. they've kind of committed, it seems like to me, like Toyota's committed a little bit more to the like lifestyle truck component of, of things. But honestly, that's most buyers, you know? But that is, not, yeah, 90 plus percent. I mean, there was a study a long time ago that it was like 98% of Jeep, Wrangler buyers never right. take their vehicle off road, so it's just transitioning. Still accurate, over. yeah. It's yeah. more accurate now that the you know four door has proliferated so much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love the three hundred. The thing that I like the most about all of those vehicles is that turbo V six. It's so funny because I have a two hundred. I got it because of that five point seven liter V eight, and I'm not one of these like I'll never have a turbo you know i don't i don't believe in any of that stuff as technology marches on we should adapt to most of it 100%. but um but i love i got that v8 because i thought it would be reliable long-term powertrain good torque etc i think that turbo v6 has everything the v8 does from like an acceleration and drivability standpoint plus it adds like far far improved fuel economy now we'll see if the longevity is the same but like toyota is pretty serious about testing those vehicles for long term and I was like really, really surprisingly into that, to that powertrain. There are only maybe three <laughs> engines on the whole market that I feel, turbo engines that I feel actually replace the higher displacement non-turbo engine that it was replacing. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them, Mercedes turbo straight six replacing V8 and, and that Land Cruiser powertrain too. I like, I love how smooth it is. I love how responsive it is. I really like that engine. Well, we had uh, Kurt Williams from Cruiser Outfitters and you know, the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum and everything on, and, and he just ran the 600 in Baja. So yeah. it's it's not untested. Like, yeah. That's not a, even remotely a question, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just, is everything surrounding that, <laughs> like, up to snuff, you know? Yeah. So, but let's, let's talk bigger things. How's, uh, how's fatherhood? <laughs> <laughs> Great. My, I have a little baby. He's it's a toddler now. He's 16 months. He's starting to walk. 16 months? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He came home from the hospital in my Audi RS2, which was cute. And he's the only baby in American history ever to have done that. Yep. I assume. This, this and, side of the ocean, at least. Yep. Right. And, uh, and so he's great. It's been an interesting experience. And everything is a little bit different than it than it has been. It was. There we go. There he is. <laughs> that was my home day. There was a lot of convincing required to uh, to allow the RS2 to be the, the car, but he did great and he killed like, it. And he's happy now. So there's no latch awesome. system in that RS2. No, no. In fact, I don't know that he ever rode in it again. It's actually really, really? small. Yeah, okay. it's really it's tight in there, and so now he's in a much bigger car seat now, and so you can't. It's not like realistic to get it in there anymore, right? Uh, which has become kind of annoying. But uh, isn't it weird <laughs> how car seats change your change your perspective on things? <laughs> like, 
yeah, car seats and the whole thing. And I'm so jealous of my friends whose kids are like in boosters or out of boosters, like with seven, eight year olds. Yeah. Mm, what's up? Hi, Chris. Kids, Chris, don't you, you probably have kids ranging from all ages. Isn't that the uh, I have 14 to four. So I've still got one, but it's forward facing. Uh, it only takes up one of the captains in the suburban, and then everybody else can fit. You have the opposite seatbelt. problem that I have, and your kid is starting to drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, real fast story about him. Um, he went with my parents today to just have lunch. Hold on, though. I'll be right there. Um, <laughs> the smallest wants in. <laughs> oh, man. Today was my kid's second day of daycare, so I'm, I'm also on the very opposite end of the spectrum here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. My favorite part was I just turned around and be like, what, what am I doing right now? I'm podcasting. I told you I'm doing this. I'll do it in a little bit. Like, you know this. We do this every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally she's in bed. <laughs> oh, no, true. True, true, true. Um, anyway, my, my oldest went with my parents. Actually, all the kids went with my parents earlier today for lunch because it's their last day before they all go back to school tomorrow. Um, and he rode with my dad and he was like, because he and I have been spending a lot of time in the car, getting used to driving the Suburban in traffic. And he's like, Dad, I got to tell you the story. I was riding with my grandpa today and he, it was a red light and there were brake lights on all the cars in front. He was still accelerating because that's something that I have been on him about doing. Like, there's no reason to hurry up and get to a stopping point. Like, let's just coast up to it. Like, mm -hmm. no one's going to be mad. And it made me laugh so hard because that is what my dad hammered into my head when I was that age. And here is my dad doing the thing in front of my teenager that he yelled at me about that I've been yelling yep. at him about it it wrecked me for probably three or four minutes of just pure <laughs> laughter and I was like did you tell him about that and he's like no <laughs> no 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 because he he's worried about the retribution when he finally drives with my dad he doesn't want my dad to just wreck him on that so luckily dad didn't listen to the podcast so it won't be that big a deal. <laughs> uh that's funny uh, complete all, derailment ultimately <laughs> in some way or i can't form. imagine the concept of uh, it's so far in the in in the uh, ross how old is your how old, kid kids she is six and a half months six yeah he's months. behind you yes so doug so i'm gonna give you the i'm gonna give you the advice that i figured out because in this day and age they don't look at what the driver's doing because they're always looking at something else a tablet a phone a dvd player right. something you need to sit there with them before you even move the vehicle and talk through all the controls, talk through what everything does. Cause they, when I was a kid, that's all we were able to do was watch what mom and dad were doing while you're driving or stare out the window. Do you wonder if 16 years from now, these discussions will be as relevant as we think they're like in, in, will our children be using vehicles that like to the extent that we, that we think about it now, are even going to allow them to make the kind of mistakes that we could have made when we were a kid. Yes. I think it depends a lot on where you are in the country. Yeah, it depends a lot on where you are in the country, but I'm also just curious about how far technology is going to advance in the next, you know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. There's a long way to go. The weather is going to be a factor. There's no question about that. But I there's do. like yep. It'll be it'll be It'll be interesting. Like if, like when I got my license, I bought a 10 year old car for six grand. And so you figure the cars our children will be driving, yours and mine, haven't been built yet. Uh, yeah, theoretically. I mean, unless, they, unless they're enthusiasts and they get something cool and yeah. old, just to get something cool and old. Fools but in that like case, probably not as worried about their like lack of attention or whatever. If they're like into mm -hmm. it, they're probably going to be fairly okay drivers. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think about this a lot. Like my new, I, I just got a new car, the new daily driver car, and it like does all this steering and lane changing and all this stuff. And like, mm. it's only going to get better from here. And it seems to be getting better very quickly, as I'm sure you realize in driving all these press cars. Oh, yeah. Two iterations of Super Cruise right. are one to two is like right. not even in the same ballpark. Yeah, totally. That is, that's an interesting thought. Um, and I think one of the big takeaways is that we're so hyper focused on now and what we can do now, you know. And like I, I watched a video on Reddit today where a Tesla running FSD went barreling into the back of a car in the snow because it didn't realize that there were flashing lights and it couldn't stop in the snow. Um, but FSD yeah, the is prospect of like what FSD is kids? such obvious yeah that stuff is so bs but like <laughs> on the freeway now most of these systems and it's funny because tesla people think that autopilot is the only system that can do this but like pretty much every car now 
can steer, accelerate, brake, and lane change mm -hmm. with almost no input, <laughs> like really easily. That's like become, if your car doesn't have it, it's like kind of unusual as a new car. And if it doesn't today, then in three years, it will. Like they all mm -hmm. will. Yep. Um, and so, you know, you got to kind of wonder where else is this going to go in the next few years? I don't think that the concept of like self-driving is realistic in the next even 20 years, but I think some of the stuff that we are like nervous about, like low speed act stuff that I was nervous about and that I did when I was a kid, you got to wonder if like, is that going to be solved for to an extent in right? well, like my worst moment was looking to the side as I was approaching cars stopped and not realize it until it was too late. Same. Auto auto braking is mm -hmm. everywhere. Like the suburban does it. I hate it, but it does it. Um, I hate it because <laughs> I'm paying attention Chris, and I'm like, this car will move out of the way. I'm good suburban. And the suburban's like, no, 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 you have to stop. I'm like, okay, I like that you're doing that, but like, stop doing it for me. Do it for my mm -hmm. kid. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But like, yeah, it is everywhere. And the, I agree. I had a similar incident when I was in college where I was looking to the side, not paying attention. Car stopped in front of me, swerved out of the way, ran over a curb, damaged the car. That problem is more or less going to be solved, especially. It's pretty much car. gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even if you, it's not auto braking, like the lights flash and the noise yeah. sounds like instantly look. Oh, yeah. 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 The suburban seats vibrate. Right. Oh, when man. any when anything, it's the cross traffic at alert. It's the you're too close while you're parking. Like, you and hilariously terrifying because all GM vehicles with that system do it is when you have like nine thousand pounds that you're pulling and it does the seat vibrating. You're like, oh my god, I, this is it. this is the what end. is dying I'm in the killing back right everybody now. right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it is disconcerting at best. Yeah, yeah. I I think is it a. Toyota, who has the system where it basically was not going to allow the vehicle to run into anything. Um, we're I, not that far from, like, we're not that far. From yeah. Us. And I think they called it the Guardian. Does that sound right? Guardian system? Guardian of the like? Galaxy, yes. You know, no. the problem that I have more and more that I realize is that these systems can't distinguish, like, foliage in a parking lot. So, like, I'll be backing yes. up and I'll be like, <laughs> stop stop you're about to right. and it's like that's a plant and i'm all set i'm gonna be just fine i'm gonna continue cruising forward actually mm. like they can probably solve that too that if they can if they can make the car lane change and steer on the freeway they can probably figure that one out so well, that, dare I that was what... ross's complaint about the was it the nissan pathfinder and the frontier like it didn't it didn't understand that you were towing and so oh, it kept no, being it like, was, oh, no, you're going to hit something. Yeah. You're like, it's it was the, the fucking trailer. The trailer like, that I attached to my vehicle three hours dude, ago. I know it's there. I The first Pathfinder that I tested, I had a, I, I would back up about three feet and it would auto break. And then I'd back up about three feet and it would auto break. It was just a horrible time. There's a very, very funny video of it floating around that I am not allowed to post on any, any sites. But there are curse words flying all over the place. <laughs> Feels but, like for journalistic integrity, you should be allowed to post that. Just a lot of bleeps. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let that video die in the abyss. Okay. Google so, knows where it is. Uh, Doug, dare I ask what the most modern card you've added to your collection is? Yeah, I just bought a uh, a, a used but new, but used, <laughs> and new to me, 2022 Mercedes-Benz E450 All-Terrain. You know about this car? Ooh, yeah. It's the... what. Uh, it's the it's e class all right so the e -class e -class wagon. Wagon. yeah that's not and they thought they decided hey here's what we can do if we lift it and put some plastic cladding on it we will convince people that it's an suv and mm -hmm. they will buy it like it the is outback. the audi all road effect which volvo tried to apply to the v60 and the v90 they which they well, have we since gotten rid of because they didn't sell the outback <laughs> did, did it and it succeeded great and then Volvo and Audi and now Mercedes were all like, shit, that's working for them. Let's pursue this. And of course, it doesn't work for any of them because it's it's doesn't it's just not the same type of person and all that. But I bought one and, and I spent a lot of time thinking about it. I've had a bunch of fast station wagons and they sell an AMG wagon still. Mm -hmm. um, but I just that's I I've become a boring person in my as my age has increased. Apparently, I don't I mean, think that's boring. I think you went with a fun Ben's hey, wagon. Uh, also, uh, Derek Powell is one of our best friends on the show, and and he's got you know lifted wagons that he yeah lives and swears by. So it's not I crazy. Think, 
I, I, um, I wish I could have gotten one without the lift, but they don't sell it that way. And frankly, I don't really mm-hmm. care one way or another, but I like the fact that it, it still has a third row, rear facing third row. It's like the last car that has Does that. it really? Wait, yeah. wait so th- didn't the, the model- The Tesla S- offered it. X. Yeah, model? Tesla Why? offered it. They yeah, might model. still, I don't know if they still do, but they, they might, it was the S that offered it. Maybe the X also. I think it was yeah. the S because it was like the glass came down. It was right in the hatch. Here. Yeah, it was so weird. So silly. Um, but the E wagon comes standard with it. And so they hmm. all have it. Um, so that's so helpful. It's actually, it's more helpful than you'd think because it's a third row that you don't have to work to get into, right? Because mm-hmm. in a minivan or an SUV, you've got to walk around a car seat or like move a seat forward or backward or whatever. But in that car, you can just hop right in. Hmm. That's um, so it's got its own door. So there's, that's kind of, it's, it's only big enough for kids, but it's still, that's something appealing to that. Does it, the third row have a latch system in it or is it just purely? That's a good question. That's a good question. I, I, I bet it doesn't. Probably, probably not. <laughs> there's no conceivable <laughs> way that that would fly. Yeah, I don't think but, so. But it's a, no, but it's, the, uh, it's perfect for like, you know, kids who are like seven to 15 and adults who are like, just want to relive drunk. this portion of their childhood. <laughs> yeah, drunk. Drunk and want to go back in time. You'd be stunned how many adults are like, I want to ride back there. And I'm like, it is so tight. You do not. They're like, no, I have to. And Man, if I- At least the roof line doesn't collapse down like breath. a CLS. Well, it doesn't. That's one if of the things I like. Breath, breath. Every single person would want to spend time in the back of it. So you know, it makes I got total a buddy, sense. Years ago, I reviewed one of those and he told me that the only way his insurer would insure it is if he signed like an affidavit promising never to let anybody ride in those back seats. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. Didn't have seat belts. Oh God, he should spend one day in the UTV world and then he would have a lot of other- stipulations on yeah. the signatures there but so no, the- i'm pulling up the only famous subaru brat i know which is bucky lassick's yes restored subaru brat yeah he comes to our local cars and coffee occasionally although i don't think I've does he really that. yeah he drives some crazy modded wrx situation i that mm-hmm. looks that looks so cool i would love to see that yeah. look at the handholds i think they're like right. ski pole right. they didn't have belts <laughs> they gave them handholds <laughs> They were like, this'll do. This is lawyers <laughs> and law was a different thing back then. Yep. Yep. But no, the, the lifted all-terrain wagon things not I mean, Johnny had a an A4 all road for a couple of years before the, the thing uh, is the thing the real reason that real thing that pushed me into it in addition to the third row and the self-driving which i think mercedes self-driving is among the best but the thing that really pushed me into it is that i looked up the zero to 60 time i had an 07 e63 wagon which had that 6.2 liter nav8 that everybody loved that all the head bolts would go and they'd blow the up 6.2 not a 6.3 yeah called they called it a 6.3 but it was a 6.2 mm-hmm. and i had one of those and it was 507 horsepower it got like 10 miles per gallon it did zero to 60 in four and a half seconds and this car that i just got has a turbo hybrid six cylinder and it does zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. And I'm like, oh my God, really? all the money for the AMG. Well, <laughs> it still feels really fast to me. I have um, no idea it was that fast. Isn't that crazy? It's like four, yeah. seven. I mean, okay. in fours and it's like, damn. On the topic of unnecessarily stupid, fast Mercedes. Can we talk about the, the four by four squared? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you driven it yet? No, no. I, I had a G63 for a week and a half last fall and I hooked the trailer up to it and it was a great time when the trailer wasn't hooked up to it. Um, yeah. But I cannot imagine what it's like if you go, you know? You know, I have to say, have you ever driven the old one? Mm-hmm. I've never even seen the old one. The new one is is cool as hell, but it's not as cool as the old one. So the, the, what happened with the old one was the old one was like hardcore lifted. Like it was lifted like a dude in Alabama would lift his C, his third owner 1500 yeah. Sierra. Truck night, truck night in America kind of deal. Pretty much. I mean, it was <laughs> like that, right? The old one was nuts. The new one is lifted nowhere near as much and it's not as wide and it's not as crazy. And and mm-hmm. but But what happened was the old one was only offered as a regular G550. So the new one is a G63, but I think they went crazier on the powertrain and less crazy on like the lift and the capabilities. Mm. Right. And so, is, it, is this one portals or is it? It's still portals, it's but still it, portals. It, okay. it, you park them next to each other and like the old one towers over the new one. <laughs> the old one is just stupid. And I think Mercedes must've gotten feedback. Like, look, we can't get this in any parking garages in any house garage. Like it's just right. not. 
Hi. Uh, yeah. Parking it up front in the valet at the restaurant is, is not going to fly. No. Yeah. It's not realistic and it's not a situation. And so I think what they did was they made the new one faster, but like less insane. And so mm. it's still really capable. Like it still has something like 14 inches of ground, some ridiculous amount. It's, which is crazy. That crazy. Is just yeah. Un- but the like- old one was like, the craziest thing in the whole history of time. You were like eye level with UPS drivers. You know? It was so, so silly. It's so, so, so silly. All right, I think I got the old one. Look at that. I mean, that's just the stupidest thing you'll ever see in your entire life. Now, the cool, the, the crazy thing about the new one is the G Wagon has been off the market for two model years. So they're just returning with the squared. And so the demand is like there's all this pent up demand. And so all the dealers that, I, not that I'm looking for one, but I've happened to talk to a couple of Mercedes dealers and I've asked them about this. Um, they want 250 over. So sticker prices are in the 600 to 650 oh range. Oh my God. Right now, that's a $350,000 base price. Cost. Wasn't the G550 laundry light or whatever it was, the, the drop top four door one, like in that range? Those were that's- amazing. Those were mill. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if you're spend, what's the difference between six fifty and a mill? If you're spending, <laughs> well, money yeah, on the car? I mean, really. Um, but yeah, six fifty is steep. Like it's a, it's a cool truck. I think it'd be a cool truck at two fifty. Mercedes wants three fifty. Six fifty is a lot, but there's a lot, a lot of pent up G wagon demand because there it hasn't been on the market for so long. Six fifty is a huge, huge, huge. I mean, think of what you could buy for six. You could buy like real cars for six. Yeah. <laughs> you could buy like a house. Cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, a big, big house here. Right. Yeah, right. Like this is not a feasible. But so they'll come. I mean, dealers won't get that, but I bet they'll get a hundred over, and that's still four fifty, mm-hmm. which is like you could buy like a really nice Mercy <laughs> Oh my god, you could I'm buy sorry, this is cool, but four like four and a half V eight one tens. Yeah, right. So and lift it. Like you could buy a V8 110 and go crazy lifting it and probably turn even more heads for like a third of the money. So that's, that's the problem. And, and you'd have 50 grand for uh spare CVs after, <laughs> after you were in the front diff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other thing about that four by four squared that's interesting. I take my Ford GT to a shop that made like it's a speed shop, but they specialize in like AMG cars. And I was in there the other day and they had an original four by four squared in that had the fender. They have these big fenders and they're carbon fiber, which is the, which is not what you want your fender to be because no, you're in an off-road vehicle. And it was damaged on this one that was in there. And I was like, what does this cost? And so when I went to, they're like, well, look, and when I went to pick the four GT up, they told me they looked it up and the new fender is $11,000 per fender. So it's 40, 11 grand a corner. If you crack one of those during off-roading, which is what the vehicle was created to do <laughs> i think i've owned 11 vehicles that would total eleven thousand dollars <laughs> right i've bought working automobiles for the price that seriously individual like, front fender that is so ass backwards that's like see that like i did a car for fuel economy you know i like, did a quick image search trying to find some and i've got shopping uh I, things instead can I tell you how many fake kits there are for carbon fender flares for five grand that people are going to throw a five grand Dude. at all day long? Cause it's I mean, not 11. <laughs> like, but yeah. the thing, it's, it's probably, if it's 11 grand for a fender, it's probably paying the company that molds them to make one for you. Yeah. You know? You're on that level or they're just the, it's so rare that like the, in order to, for them to justify that production run, they wanted to charge that. And so that's what it's going to be. That's so but, silly. Dude, it's, yeah. there's, there's stuff on here for like seven grand. What website are you on? <laughs> just Google, just Google shopping. Like I, when I, I wanted to find some fenders. <laughs> <laughs> wagon fenders. Yeah. Seriously. Do you, uh, 30, do you sell, 3,200, buy it now. No. If you have a vehicle like that, you're not going shopping on Google. At least at some of those guys are. Oh, yeah, or they will be. I don't know yet, but they will be. Or they will exactly. be. Or they will be. Yeah. Doug, do you still have the uh, the G Cab? Yeah, and it's still my favorite car. I love it. Exactly. I drive it all the time. Um, I drive it more than any other car. The values on those have gone way, way up, and so it's yep. kind of it's kind of scary to drive it. Like my friends won't touch that car because they're all <laughs> afraid of damaging it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that car. It is peculiar. It is the ugly. Which, that's kind of your thing. I it mean, makes a Defender 130 look like an attractive vehicle. 
Would it be less weird looking if it didn't have a spare tire bolted on the back? Um, people have taken those off and no, there's no way to make it less weird looking. It's a terribly designed car. It would look but, more like 90s Hot Wheels without the spare, just like lurking, you know? Right, it is weird. And then there's that third brake light that like peaks up. It's a horrible looking car, but I just love it. It's, it's like the most versatile car I've ever owned. It's like a big V8, so it can keep, like it's relatively fast. Um, it's really smooth and mm. it's, a pop, it's a power top convertible. So like it's a, you put the top down at any time. It can go off road. We take it off road all the time. It's like, there's nothing it can't do. It's like the perfect, and it's like big as five seat belts. It's, you know, you put mm. the top up, you can turn on heated seats and heat. And it's like nice in there as opposed to the old Defender, which is just trash. How many multitudes better is it than the old Defender? Because if oh, you had man. a totally uneducated person walk up to the two of them next to each other, they'd go, okay, V8, roof comes off. Right. Uh, big, boxy, and, and you know, off-roady. The, the, the G-Wagon is the ugliest car, but the old Defender is the most overpriced because those old Defenders are selling for 80 grand. The ones like the one I have, mm -hmm. and there is no part of that car that's an $80,000 ownership Driving experience. Yeah. With the exception <laughs> of it's cool and you're flexing on, you know, people in Jeeps. That's like it. That's all. You've paid yeah. 80 grand to like, to like big dick people and right. Look, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and it that's is, true. That's what it is. It's cool. It is cool. Like there's no question about it, but like, you mean you get wet driving that car, even if you bought the hard top, like it doesn't, <laughs> that's a it's, terrible car. It's different means to the same end as like a, a JL Rubicon, even though a JL Rubicon is probably better to drive. Am I oh, incorrect? Yeah. yeah? Is oh. it? Oh hey, God. Man. Yeah. And the JL Rubicon is not exactly like an amazing car to drive. Those old Defenders are just, they're not, they're not usable cars. In fact, I've moved mine permanently to the East Coast. It's not like a, it's not a car to realistically operate day to day. <laughs> just not. <That's> so interesting <laughs> because there are people in the UK and whatnot that swear by them. You know? I think the only people who are still running those cars like day to day are doing so in like a farm property or like some sort of situation like that, or it's a newer one. I mean, mine's 27 years old too. That's another component mm -hmm. of it, right? Like it's the 180 horsepower. I used to drive it from Philly to Nantucket, like frequently, that's like six and a half hours. I can't imagine doing that now. Did you go, was, did you take 95 through Connecticut or the Merit through Connecticut? Because I, whatever I Google told me then, but oh, I think boy. the Merit, <laughs> I always try to take the merit because it's like beautiful. It is so very, think, very pretty on depending on the time of year. 95, I think, is usually like the quicker route. Um, just the clusterfuck of all clusterfucks. <laughs> Connecticut is my least favorite state to drive through, actually. Of, of all, all of them? Oh yeah. man. I am. And I've driven in now 49 states, and Connecticut is my least favorite state. What's what's the lurking single that you haven't? Uh, Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Oh, I thought it was gonna be yeah. some random like Arkansas. Yeah, like, <laughs> Iowa. Yeah. Alaska is supposed to be unbelievable if you go to the right places i'm sure it is i'm sure i'll get there someday it's also in the you got to take the g cab up to alaska that'd be amazing oh you know, man or alaska great. is so i drive every year from san diego to cape cod and the distance from seattle to anchorage so keep in mind seattle's the most northwest point in america basically mm -hmm. and anchor is like the same that's <laughs> yeah. great really oh my God. really far Jesus. Yeah. we we the scale, like we never do it justice on maps. The scale of Alaska is massive. Yeah, it's like, insane. I mean, it's insane. That's, that's crazy. So at, speaking of the cross-country drives and out of curiosity, how'd you get hooked up with the uh, the guys that are in my backyard at a Cultivated Collector? You know, I became friends with, do you know Rami at Inbound Motorsports? He's I in don't. New Jersey. So he does like really weird imported cars. And he sold a few cars on Cars and Bids, like weird, like vans with gullwing doors. We're at that, like, and not modded, like they're weird Japanese cars that we all have never heard of, but they, you know, he finds this kind of, so he, mm -hmm. he helped me bring in my RS2. And then he's buddies with um, Matthew who runs the Cultivated yeah, Collector. Yeah. And, um, and so he like, I, yeah, I like hooked up with him and, and we have very similar uh, tastes and personalities when it comes to exotic okay. and so i shot that xjr 15 at his place like 10 months ago basically yeah it's a it's a very weird eclectic little shop that you would never ever know it's there if you didn't look for it right you now it right. is very weird and eclectic he, he he and i like really have very similar car tastes right now he's got i was just talking to him today he's got um 
like Carrera GT and Fiat Panda. <laughs> oh, that tracks. I yeah. am here for that. Like that yep. is that is what I'm looking for. Yep. Is um, the Panda at least a four by four? Yeah, he's got two four by four pandas. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> That's, That's so the world good. I want to live in. You know, <laughs> man, we you want to go really eclectic? I think we are still collectively throwing around the idea of a Hooniverse Lada Neva project car. Oh that is. The traveling pants of the uh, of the project car world. Do you feel as though the concept of a Soviet car or a Russian car is become a little taboo in the last year? You know, the talks about this has died off since. Yeah, like last January. Interestingly, right, right, um, yeah. Interestingly, indeed. Like, I feel like it's just not as funny as it was. There was a guy two summers ago who was driving like a, one of those UAZ trucks around Nantucket for the summer. Uh-huh. And it was funny two summers ago. And I don't, he wasn't back this summer. And I don't really <laughs> think it's quite as, like, I don't really yeah. think it's quite as this well, I mean, Jan- last January 6th, he was, we probably know where he was, but we're going to leave that subject for another time. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think a Neva would be cool, but I don't necessarily want to go down the road of explaining to people, yeah, it's this Russian car. It's so no, it's no. funny. Cool. I feel like okay. if you're gonna do that right now, like go with a Ural motorcycle, like right. the sidecar, like just that'll be a little more under the radar. Like, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. The Neva. So, yeah, but to wrap up- cool. And nobody ever brings them over and they should because they're such trash cars. And like everybody should be involved in a meme car, I think. In fact, <laughs> currently, speaking of meme cars, I am bidding on a smart crossblade that is on cars and bids, which I highly recommend. I hope to win it. By the time this goes up, I hopefully will have won it. But the smart crossblade is the memeiest of all meme cars. And I've always wanted one and I'm, I would be thrilled to have this opportunity. Do you know this vehicle? I, I know of it, and I can only hope that you take the engine out and put a Busa engine in it. No, you can't have more power in a car than have a windshield. It's already got so much power. You got to drive it with a helmet. You have to wear a helmet anyways. Why does it matter how fast you're going? <laughs> that is the worst <laughs> oh thing that has ever existed, and I want it so desperately. Imagine so, pulling up in that thing with those doors. No. Doors. <laughs> this is the doors. biggest air quote of all times. Yeah. yeah. They're not even doors. I don't even know why they bothered, but they did. So so they did they put it in just so you could flex. You have scissor doors like a Lambo, but they're not actually doors because you can like fall out of them. <laughs> How many of these things did they make? They they claim they made 2000 which I find to be dubious yeah. because okay. I can't imagine more than 20 or 30 people. <laughs> One did one. they make 2000 actually or just so they could claim it to like the government and have they are a- individually numbered and so in theory they did make 2000 right like there's a dash plat but i mean that's got to be one of the in the running for one of the worst cars ever made how much does that weigh that's a great question i bet it's lightweight as hell like 1600 pounds or something it's got to be really light is it is, like, it is a three-speed who, auto is it the same it's that horrible sequential manual that all of the uh, original smart cars have this uh, Good job, cars and bids uh, specialist. Uh, Wayne ended a little over sixteen hundred pounds. Sixteen hundred pounds. This is an absolute. <laughs> this car is gonna is great. This is this is a sports car in the making. Uh, okay, the one lurking question that I will have for you on this is, where in the hell are you gonna get this thing serviced? Well, okay, there's a bunch of issues. Transport is one. You, you've got to call and be like, listen, you've got to pick it up on a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be enclosed. Yeah. <laughs> flip it upside down and put it on the truck and put a tarp over it no you know what actually go into the photos because there is apparently these were sold with um covers for just this <laughs> just the steering wheel so the entire interior you can hose out go to scroll down uh, they were the entire oh my gosh out except okay. for <clears throat> yes so, <laughs> here's the only thing with consequential electronics right exactly so they apparently these instead of giving you a car cover which would have been the right thing to do they sold them with a cover for this and a couple photos over they have a cover for the center console (laughs) (laughs) it's like what you put on a barbecue grill right like so instead of a car cover this was the bmw z1 that they didn't engineer from scratch 
BMWC one that they didn't what? What's engineer that? from scratch. They took the Legos they had and and built the closest they thing they could thinking, make. They were thinking, how can we using what we have and knowing that we have a, a small budget, how can we make something interesting? And the answer was, let's take off a lot of stuff and charge people a lot more for it. Yeah, dude. There's the there's the plaque, the cross blade. Yeah, twelve thirty two. Let me tell you something. The F fifty is not individually numbered. But the crossblade, the plaque <laughs> on this just says "Why." <laughs> the seller just posted right before I got on the podcast that I saw. The seller posted that he's got like a framed painting of the car, what? and I'm thinking to myself, "Who the hell?" F- <laughs> <laughs> like I purely. Oh my kind gosh! Of- I found that too. Can you drive this thing cross country? If oh God no, it? God no! Look at this. Please, Who created please. this? Why did someone think to themselves? And I don't want to like insult the seller and be like, "Why? <laughs> Who made like this? Is the stupidest car ever made? Why would you memorialize so, it? Just to have him put it in the cabin when he ships." Oh wait, never mind. That'll ruin <laughs> yeah. it. That's yeah. gonna have no, to mail no. this to me separately. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna buy the car and he's gonna say, "All right, what? Where do I send the painting?" I'm like, "You know what? Why don't you go ahead and hang on to that? I think yeah. I'm." That, that could be its own individual auction. Yeah. You know what? You um, you do what you want with that. I mean, like, I know if you've owned some eclectic cars, and, and I owned a Via Cross, and I never in a million years would have imagined getting a, a, a painted picture of the Via Cross. You know, that when is were, just... When you were driving your Via Cross, did you ever think to yourself, I wish this had no windshield, no roof, no doors, no glass of any kind. Did that ever? Yes, because the air conditioning didn't work and the driver window didn't go down. So well, there you go. It's, <laughs> one could make the argument it's better to have no glass than be in a car that is fixed glass yes. with no working climate control. <laughs> but no, never did I wish. I wish I was in a smart crossblade. Dude, Look the accessories this. on these things are amazing. Look at that it's ridiculous the perfect thing. picnic accessory. This might honestly be the worst car that I've ever encountered. And that's so, us, I want it. Uh, like, what do, you, what do you do with it? Do you, you like do What you, I'm going to do with it is I'm going to send it to Nantucket and drive it for a summer and make videos with it, a couple of videos, and then okay. and flex on people at the market with the doors going up. And then I'm going to sell it again on the site presumably at a loss because by then i think my videos will have documented the fact that no one should own this car <laughs> <laughs> this is masochism 101 my god my wife is like you're not really gonna buy this the last one we had i actually don't know if i'll end up with it. the last one we had sold for fifty five thousand dollars. there's more Truth than me, one on here we sold this is the third one we've sold the first one we sold with no title i swear to god and it sold for thirty six thousand dollars. yes it did which yes, I should have bought. I should have bought the no title one because so this one's already at 36. $55,000. Think about that. I want to buy this car as a meme, but whoever bought the one for 55 paid like that's was, four series money. Was it the Peterson? Did they buy it? <laughs> Peterson sold the first one that we had. They were the oh, really? The first one. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. <laughs> I was gonna. I'm trying to see if like the oh, no. the uh, wait, the Chris, can you, is a lower number. Wait, can you click the picture of them of up a little to the left of them driving? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! He's like on the freeway. Steer- what is this guy doing? Get off the highway. Where, where steering wheel cover still oh, on? <laughs> the airbag's gonna hit that and then smash into his. <laughs> I think you didn't realize they're supposed to take that off. That one was in Connecticut, actually. It was in Norwalk. Yeah, I say that one's in Norwalk. It was in Norwalk. The buyer of that was in Florida, which I think is where they all should be. Like when you really think about it, it's warm and the people are crazy. And I think that that's what needs to be involved in that car. Or, you know, San Diego. Yeah. I'm not saying warm where it doesn't rain. Like, right. You really need it to ah, not rain a lot. Pompano Beach, that tracks. It tracks. Uh huh. This was in Norwalk. That's so funny. With like Connecticut plates, like the, but it only has these all have no miles because people buy them. People buy them and they're like, well, thirty five hundred kilometers. People buy them and they're like, oh, this seems cool, and then they drive it like four times, and they're like, huh, I spent fifty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is of all the cars that I have seen in Norwalk. This is not one of them that I would guess. Look how big that pedal box is. 
Right. And it's notice there's no carpeting. I mean, they knew what was going to happen. It's the Lotus Elise of smart cars. Heck yeah. This is a well, deep smart car. Look at that. The one you're bidding on had had like quilted floor mats. I yeah, that that. Was a I'm going to pull those out. I'll sell those. I, I'll send them to you guys individually. Is it the funny thing <laughs> also about as wall decor? Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing also about the one that I'm bidding on, the seller reached out and he was like, listen, he said, at some point, the Carfax was mistakenly, someone wrote 140,000 miles instead of 1,400 miles. It's and true. and I said, he said, and I don't really want to run the auction because I'm worried someone will think it has high miles. And I'm like, trust me, there is no one on the planet who believes that someone drove this car 140,000 miles. miles. <laughs> it's not going to be an issue that you're going to face during uh, this auction. Story. Yeah. Oh. This isn't the million mile tundra. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no. So, Quite oh the my God, that is, yeah, that is something, man. Ross and, walked us right into talking about car valuations. <laughs> yes. There we go. <laughs> So how, we can, how do you feel the market's doing, Doug? Can we can we base the entire market projections on on smart crossblades? <laughs> <laughs> well, because those are only sold to the kind of stupid people who aren't affected. <laughs> yeah, by them. just just the, um, yeah. the market is slow. What do you guys think? I mean, I it's interesting. Like some cars are better than others. Some cars have not slowed, um, which has surprised me because I thought by now everything would have slowed. Like a year ago, you could already tell things were starting to turn. Um, I kind of think November, December of 21 was sort of a peak mm-hmm. and things have kind of slowed, but like some cars are still doing well. Most cars are not. Teslas are doing worse than I've ever seen any. Tes- yeah. Awful yeah. time to sell a Tesla. Not good. It's not good. We um, just had, if you put in Tesla in that search bar, we, we just no sailed a model three of some variety <laughs> For 30 or something. And I'm now hitting model oh. threes in the twenties. And honestly, yeah, that one that there's an 18, go back, we'll go back. There's a, this is a performance for 36, by the way, but that hmm. long range there bid to 31, 750. And I guess we sold it after, but um, I'm now hitting higher mileage model threes in the twenties. And what? Honestly, that is a that huge number, drop off. At that number, it starts to become, I'm not a Tesla like enthusiast, but you start to think about like an appliance for commuting. And you're like, mm. if I yeah. just want to think it, 20 to 25 and they're and not if, off that if you're buying it secondhand then the only real elon support you're showing is using superchargers yeah so well, I, and if you have the ability to home charge i mean right there you go it's i have never seen a car drop in value as fast as tesla's over the last 90 days it's like wild haha <laughs> the the best uh logic thing i saw to it was like uh it was, it was somebody who I think was like a programmer or a coder. Uh, and they were like, well, they, they said he knew a lot about rocket ships, but I didn't know anything about rocket ships. So I didn't really know. And they said he knew I a lot this. about cars and I didn't yep. really, I know a lot about cars. So I knew they said he knew a lot about code and he's like, hold up. I know this stuff. And he is completely wrong where all of those well, other two groups before had already figured it out. Yeah. If yeah. Really, I mean, yeah, it's a, the whole thing is interesting. I think, I mean, he's obviously revealed himself to be insane and not in a great <laughs> like even taking the politics out of it like the whole twitter acquisition and all this has obviously gone in a different direction than i suspect he expected and the rest of the world expected mm-hmm. and but i think also that the, the whole the, it's interesting what's happened to tesla's there's there's certainly a component of people who don't want to be a part of tesla because of elon right now but also i think that like tesla buyers were sort of are sort of uniquely affected by the raising rising interest rates i think a lot of those people were mortgage brokers and realtors so they're mm-hmm. individually affected and i think also a lot of those people were like kind of new money young money tech people who were borrowing to buy and now interest rates are 7% and a $100,000 model x doesn't seem quite as appealing as it did mm-hmm. a year ago when maybe their job was a little bit more stable shortly post student loan kind of yeah. Wealthy. And I kind of wonder if like there's more to it than just like people hate Elon. I, I think like Tesla had has some sort of unique things that have kind of pushed it into this direction. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I just and I mean it also coincides with gas prices dropping over the last 90 days. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. Demand was even stronger when gas prices were crazy and they've slowed mm-hmm. that's that's slowed a little bit as well. Yep. Yep. It's kind of a perfect storm. That is that is interesting, but it yeah, jumped no. twenty cents on me the other day, and I was like, "Wait, hold up! How did that happen?" Like, I was like mid mid twos, and all of a sudden it was like, "Hey, we're almost three. And I was like, "What?" Mid 
got yes, gas right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm filling up a Suburban, right? And say yeah. <laughs> 12 miles per gallon. The gas prices are an important factor. Yeah. Have well, you considered and, a van? Have you considered a Pacifica hybrid? Yes. He has, he has um, considered a lifted Sienna. Yep. I, so every time I do the calculator on that, the cost to get into yeah. the Pacifica versus what you're actually saving in gas, you're yeah. financially upside down on that right. as well. So it turns out the, uh, the Sienna, oh God, what's the all wheels drive lifted? Uh, the uh, timber? Woodland? It's woodland? not. No, not timber. Wood, wood, woodland. It's woodland. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out those are holding value very well. <laughs> yeah. Right. And weird. Yeah. Big money, yeah. They're big money to begin with. Everybody wants a new Sienna because they're all hybrids. They're great cars. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. I, when I was in high school, I'll never forget my baseball coach got out of an expedition to get into a V8 Explorer, and I was oh. like, "Why did you do that?" And he said, "Oh, fuel economy." And I was like, oh. <laughs> "Transaction costs alone, right?" I'm yeah, gonna, coach. Your two mile per gallon benefit, I don't think, is really going to benefit the you know, tax what, that you paid on the difference. Right. More than you'll spend on the light. The, Right. Delta on the life of the vehicle and fuel economy. Right. Yeah, it kind of that's asinine. But you know, um, vehicle prices have done a weird thing, and I'm sure you, uh, you keep on top of this more than Chris or I or anybody we know does. But the hottest of the hot, like the Rivians and you know the Hummer EVs and and new Tundras and Sequoias and whatnot, have kind of cooled off a little bit. Yeah, but like the stuff that was really eclectic that people were going after has stayed the same, like um, triple locked 80 series Land Cruisers yep. hasn't yep. changed at all. Um, and then, you know, higher mileage stuff that people are just enthusiasts. Uh, like there was a, a hundred series with a bunch of miles on it that went for like 5,100 bucks. The other yeah. Day. Yeah. You know? Which, which during the, pay, which in 21, that would have been a $10,000 car. And I think at you sit on an interesting point, which is like the hot, the stuff that is amazing. So like the triple locked 80s, the really special stuff has stayed desirable and valuable. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that was less special, but people were still overpaying for two years ago, they're not overpaying for it the, anymore. That goes double for cars like that yep. that have fuel economy issues where like people are worried about getting 12 miles per gallon in an economy where their job maybe isn't stable as it used mm -hmm. to be, that sort of thing. There, there definitely is that apprehension about like a recession and job loss kind of thing too. You know, like people aren't as keen to get into, you know, like a 6'2 Tahoe, yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or I, a, think, no, I was kind of hoping that the really good stuff would really slow down. But what's happened is that, like you said, the good stuff hasn't gone up anymore. It's just flat, but right. it hasn't dropped. And the bad stuff has dropped pretty quick or the stuff, not bad stuff, but sort of like the not, not the like pristine 993 turbos, yeah, yeah. but the ratty hundred series are not 50. You can't just right. put one on what Craigslist or cars and business or whatever, and get a 15 for it. Those days are mm -hmm. over. Um, yeah. 350,000 mile eighties aren't going for, you know, 15, like they were They're down there. Was a time, there was a time, there was a time where we couldn't set a reserve high enough on an 80 series and miss it on is it. crazy. And and Chris is punching himself in the face because he got rid of his like right before all this shit went down. Really? And I didn't give it to Doug before yeah. I started writing yeah. even. Yeah. <laughs> I did I, I did submit it. Big land cruiser place during that period. Like we became the hundred series place at that time at 80s and 200s to an extent as well. But mm -hmm. it yeah. sort of off then. You guys and I hate mud, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, people try to sell them on I Hate Mud at first. I think we give more exposure, obviously, which helps. Um, but regardless, like, there was a time. I mean, I was when I was looking for my 200, and I paid the peak of the market. I, I bought it in December of 21 at the absolute peak, but I needed to buy it then. I had, like had, it doesn't matter, but I, had, I like had no choice. Um, there were the guys who had heritage, because I really wanted a heritage, right? Like I knew what was going to happen. It was yeah. going to go out of production. And in 20 years, those would still be getting crazy money because they were the last of the last. A but the guys who had heritages, they were asking like 140. And I'm sitting here like a year ago, Land Cruisers were 20 grand off at Toyota dealers who were desperate to find anybody to take them. I just cannot justify spending. Like it's okay. crazy. And so I so, bought a huge high mileage. One of my biggest regrets in life is not buying a uh, heritage for like 10 under sticker. Yeah, there was a time in 20, like when they oh, first God. came out, 
Although I suspect the heritage that becomes the most valuable will be the 2021 three row heritage. That will be like the most desirable. I disagree. Heritage. I think it will be the two row heritage. No, the two I, rows, they made yeah. a ton of. The three rows, three row was only in 21 and it was only a small portion of but it. And I, that's the one people are going to want. I think for the person that really wants a Land Cruiser to use it the way that it should be used, the two row is going to be more desirable than the three row. Maybe, but there's going to end up being way more two rows in the end. That's true. There, because all of the 20s are two rows and like 70% of the 21s are two rows. I, I spent a week with a, a two row heritage in peak it was like the f- first week of april or the last week of march in 2020 and it was like the perfect getaway truck it was man in hindsight it was so good and yeah. it's there's a guy on i hate mud who's asking 150 for one with six miles what you are out of your freaking mind there, you know? i swear though there was a time when he could have gotten close to that like i, I, was, <laughs> I was looking they were like 120 to 140 all day long and you that's just what you paid if you wanted one that's but that's changed that is how i ended up in a gx 460 in <laughs> november of 2021 dude these prices are nuts it's, it's wild but it's also like the super eclectic enthusiast car stuff has done the exact same ctsv wagons with a six-speed have there is plot line and they will I, never come back down that is it i Shouldn't got a buddy who bought one of those seven years ago and he was like do you think this car will gain in value and i was like a six-year-old gm product i was like of course it won't gain in value." <laughs> i was like how like, I'm yeah. like that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard kind of mm. and now that car is probably worth a hundred <laughs> Pro- yeah i mean eight if not nine if it's clean and healthy you know yeah this car had like serious accident damage or like a salvage title or something and it still brought 53 crazy what's your yeah that's um, a that's a year ago what's your take on chevy avalanches um i love the chevy avalanche especially the heavy duty one they oh, don't yeah. exist anymore they're so hard to find um but i love the avalanche i also love the hummer ev by the way and the new silverado ev i'm like somewhat in the minority i think among car journalists but i'm like obsessed with that i'm curious what you think of the hummer review and you have it i haven't gotten one for a week i really want it i love that truck i am intending to take it up to one of the massachusetts state parks and drive it through a snowy and run it out trail that the uh, jaguar f-pace svr may or may not have been at the tipping point on on three wheels last year <laughs> That's the perfect car for an off-road trail. <laughs> my brother and I, <laughs> and my brother and I just went for it and uh, and regretted it immediately. But it sounded good. So, I Doug, think. I I know three are within seven miles of me because there have been four on that lot since June. What Hummer EVs? Yeah, they're still there. Oh. Yeah, there's three of them still there. This is a GM dealer. Uh, yeah, GM GMC Buick riding the market down he probably had him at 200 at first and then 275 yep i mean if you look at we've sold a zillion of these on cars and bids and it's actually interesting to, to watch the curve because they're all equipped the same way so unlike mm-hmm. rivians where like there's some variability like look at this the most recent sale is at 160 right hmm. if you scroll down to the first couple they people were spending two there's one sold for 260 so that that was an that's April. crazy so that dude paid to be nine months for earlier he paid an extra hundred grand for the privilege of having that car for nine months. And what's the, is is that double MSRP? Yeah. MSRP is such a nebulous concept with these because I'm sure that none ever, you know, no. I think uh, MSRP was what, like 150? I want to no, say. No, it's, it says edition one is 110. 110. Uh, I mean, it's so underpriced. Yeah. there. Uh, but, but that's like, that's the same thing they did with 2007 GTR. So it was 59,995 and then it yeah. was suddenly 65 and it was seven, yeah. you know. Soon be but it is interesting, like, so this car, so this dude paid the 260. And so for nine months, he got to enjoy being the coolest dude in the world, which he was like, you drive that around a year ago. It was like, holy crap. But like, that's an enormous amount of money to pay to be for, like, you got to be so rich. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, you just, know you're blowing the money. You know it's gone. It's not like, yeah. you know, something where it might go so, up or you might retain it or something. I don't want to talk shit ahead of spending my week with this thing, but that picture of the of the cockpit, like the driver's vicinity, 
looks like the exact same materials <laughs> as every other GM product. Look, it's not <laughs> the quality of the vehicle, the interior quality, that wasn't their, their top priority, all right? Right, right. But the thing that I think is cool about this, <clears throat> it's a, it can out accelerate a supercar. It's a convertible. It can out off road just about anything. And I swear it's the smoothest pickup truck, the smoothest riding pickup truck I've ever driven. EV <laughs> trucks are all pretty smooth because they have so much weight low and it kind of it kind of settles the natural problem with trucks, which is this like open bed in back that can kind of make them feel the bucking. Yeah, yeah. The front forward, yeah. And like I just think that that Hummer EV is like super versatile. Most people hate them and think they're awful, but I'm not. I, I, I've seen it on a few people's worst vehicles we drove in 22 list. Car enthusiasts or car journalists dude, hate the Hummer EV. I don't know. As is, far as I'm concerned, a pickup truck you can take the roof off of that does zero to 60 in three seconds. Like right. it's, that alone is cool. It's hard. <clears throat> There's like, also a lot of this holier than now, like it weighs 9,000 pounds and it's going to kill people. But like a Super Duty, a big Super Duty weighs probably seven and there's way more of those. Like if you look at it from like a market cap perspective, like <laughs> there's like hundreds of thousands of 7,000 pound Super Duties and there's like 2,000, 9,000 pound Hummer EVs and you're more likely to be killed by a guy in a Super Duty, I think. Dude, there's uh, just as many crossblades. <laughs> The Hummer and the Crossblades offset 2,000 I, each. We're good. If I won that billion-dollar lotto jackpot, I would have bought a Hummer EV and a Crossblade and just let's see what happens. They both just, have no roof. Or you put the oh. Crossblade in the bed of the Hummer. Yeah, well, 100% it would fit. 100%. It definitely would. That is just... And it would accelerate just the same. The is Hummer. is part of the... the, uh, the critique on them is what was that report that came out it was like 80 dollars to fill it with electricity like i feel like that was like it's really heavy it's just as expensive to fill with gas like like we're, we're talking about a vehicle that i just think one of the problems the probably the, the biggest blind spot that most automotive journalists have is that like they have trouble separating like what they would want from like what or like <laughs> Like what a person would want who's interested in this type a of vehicle. Traditional like consumer and us. Right. Like I would never buy a Hummer EV because the optics of that are disastrous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me be clear. Like for the segment and for the person who wants it, like I get it. And I think a lot of car journalists who are, are like, you can't drive this around. This, the person, mm -hmm. this is for assholes. And it's like probably true, but like, Okay, but assholes buy cars, and let, we still have to provide an objective review. Yeah, so, yeah, it depends to fill up, but like I assume the guy paying a hundred two sixty for one nine months yeah. ago probably can spend eighty bucks to fill right. up this. Yeah, it's just to, like filling a regular suburban right now. To like your point, yeah. Automotive journalists get hyper focused on how good a vehicle is and what they enjoy from it or what it does at their intended task, and we all forget that cars and automotive manufacturers it's a business first and foremost they exist for no other reason than to sell cars yeah you know like yeah. whether it is in the form of a hummer or the new prius or tesla it doesn't matter to the people you know sitting in on the board like they just want to move units and yeah. make meet their numbers like it, it's such a disparity between like is this a responsible thing? And is my bonus going to be <laughs> what, yeah. I, what I want it to be? And yeah. For some of those journalists, they never, like, was it the Ford Edge launch years ago? Like, one of the few times I got invited out. And they had, like, um, the top tier, the, the platinum edition door, like, on a stand. And so some guys, like, well, is that is that standard? And they're like, no, it's the option for the platinum. And he's like, well, what what's the base unit get? And literally 10 minutes before in the presentation they said like we're going to sell this to professional adults that have one or two kids and they're all going to be limiteds or platinums like mm -hmm. that's the rental like the the base door is going to the rental fleets bud like mm -hmm. they don't think about the buyer profile like the things that the marketing departments have already thought through and all this other like yeah i just yeah to, to a lazy to a disappointing extent sometimes i think that that's true you know you got a lot of car journalists hate on stuff like Lexus RX and cars like that that are just, but those it's CRV, CRV is bland. We all know mm -hmm. that, but like they sold a half million. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For a good price too. <laughs> right, but yeah. 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 But, 
there, there's also TV enthusiasts, you know? Right. Like the what? amount of research I did for my TV was like, okay, it's in my price range. It's in right, the, it's the size, size of- range that I want <laughs> right. and it has a warranty purchase, right. you know? Right. So it's it's all relative. That's probably. kind of part of the problem. I think that that's, that's sort of an issue. And I try when I review cars, especially cars like that, to be like, yeah, I'm never going to want a Ford Raptor with the number 37 on the back <laughs> signifying the size of the tire, which is like an embarrassment. Oh. <laughs> Especially and when you're like, going to put 40s on it anyway. I was going to say, what happens when you put 39s? <laughs> like, oh, like, or, the, or the fucking the Ram Rebel that had the Nino Terror Grappler Right, right. On the yeah. seats, like, like I wouldn't you, I wouldn't buy that car. But yeah. I think a lot of the, a lot of people wouldn't buy a smart crossplane, and that's their problem. Okay, like that's their detriment. But I would hope mm-hmm. that they would at least be able to objectively be with. Like I can objectively say that that Raptor is cool, and I hope that those people could objectively say with me that the smart crossblade is mm-hmm. the worst car ever made. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I, we may not have liked Avatar, but there were plenty of people that did. Right. And, and wanted were, to watch a second one for three plus yeah. hours. Uh-huh. And there were plenty of people that liked uh, the Blair Witch Project, and I'm one of them. And those right. are the same right. people that liked the Crossblade. You know? Right. The Blair Witch Project, <laughs> they just ran around in the woods for an hour and a half and screamed. And that scared some people, and they were into that. Those and so the there's something that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and the theater loved it, or the, the yeah, the production companies loved it because yeah. they spent $12 to make a movie that made millions yeah. of dollars. 20, oh, and they, they had a one point two. They had a similar budget of the Hummer EV uh, interior. Oh, <laughs> oh. So, all right. So what are you Doug said that. Do? Please don't take Ross's uh, loan away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I am genuinely looking forward to it. Um, I intend on scaring everybody that sits in it, including mm, definitely not my daughter. Uh, we'll revisit Dude, that as we need to. You actually need to be careful about that. She's in a rear-facing seat still. No, like, I'm, I'm not going to. <laughs> she's that going the wrong with, way when you accelerate. <laughs> the thrills I will get driving my daughter around it will be dropping her at daycare and taking yes. up two spots. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to park far away. I legitimately and actually think that the Hummer EV is the best electric truck on sale. But I wouldn't buy one. Like, I would get a Rivian. But if yeah. I had mm-hmm. infinite money and didn't care what people thought of me, I would get a Hummer EV. No, dude. Dude. I am fully on board for an R1S. I just can't afford one yet. <laughs> it's crazy. And you know what? We sold one yesterday for the highest we've sold one yet. So it's they're, they're, they don't seem to be really coming down. We sold one yesterday for like 136 or something. Holy so. crap. Oh, they had, we had sold the first one for like 130. And then it kind of came in like 121 teens range. And we thought that's where they were going to kind of settle. And so this one sold. Now, this was the first black one we had. And I think that that must have played a part because I suspect black mm. must have been delayed. And a lot of the early ones were some like weird green color that sort it's of. It's the played. launch edition green. Yeah, which not everybody liked, but 136. And I'm sitting here because I want this car too. And I'm like. Dude, it looks good. It looks so good. I saw my first one last week, and it, it, I texted Chris immediately. And was like, "Dude, it looks awesome." It they looks are great. the perfect size. Yeah. They're the perfect size. I I also for you. It also eliminates some of the problems that people have with cars like the suburban. Oh, it gets bad fuel economy because it's so big. Well, now you don't really have to make that trade off, and it out accelerates a Carrera GT, and it out off roads <laughs> right. a Ranger. Like it, what yeah. does it not do? Like it's insane how good, except for possibly remain in business and we'll find yeah. out yeah, yeah, yeah God, we'll i hope so i mean hopefully the whole amazon contract actually fleshes itself out but i yeah. saw my first one of those in person the other day yeah the, the rivian cool. amazon truck yeah i reviewed one a couple of weeks ago i think it's cool as hell um it's really got some cool stuff to it was did the I, we know the review can't have how what's your like normal turnaround between filming and it depends on like the exact situation. Like if it's a car that we're putting on the site, like the next week, I can get it back in a few days. Mm. Um, but some some cars I sit on forever. Like if it's not a new car, I just put up a Renault Clio video that like I had shot eighteen months ago. Oh my <laughs> god! <gosh. laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what okay. happened. Okay. Well, did you have your thoughts about it changed since you filmed it? That's an interesting question. I've never thought about it. new cars. <laughs> I try to get up right away because they're re- relevant. Yeah. So like older stuff, if it, if we're not selling it on the site and it's not new, there's not really a big like need to put it up right away. So those cars kind of fall by the wayside and they're like more buffer for like if I'm on vacation or something. Mm-hmm. It's always good to have a backlog. Yeah. What a uh, Renault's awesome. 
God, I love that game. Oh, it's so good. That was all like the power, all the weight is in the back. It's like dangerous as hell. It's a fun car. The fascination of so many of our childhood video games. Yeah. Yeah. So they're good. they're like almost legal too. I think they came out in 2000. This one was at the Lane Museum and they get some exemption. Check this out. The Lane Museum gets an exemption to the 25 year rule because they're like an ed- educational institution. What? So they can have whatever they want, right? And I'm like, shit, I want to be an educational can they- can they plate them as like show and display? They or plate them it- in Tennessee. I think it's it's a show or display thing, but it's an exemption if, that that like allows educational institutions to take in cars that aren't because show or display only applies to like very special, very mm. limited production cars. But because they're that, so they have a Tennessee plate on all these cars, and I'm driving around like, That's amazing. you know, because they're in Nashville, and I'm driving around like, man, I want to. How can I be an education? <laughs> Doug, we can and, talk later. We can we can start a school board. or something. Like we can yeah, figure right. something out. Cool. Like. Like if John Oliver can start a church. Right, right. <laughs> like, how do we make this work? <laughs> we can certainly come up with something. So what what uh what are you excited to drive this year? That's an interesting question. I just did Z06. What am I excited for this year? See, I'm up? I'm hoping that the local fleet gets the Z06. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I, they only gave it to me for two days and it rained, which it never does here. Oh fun. Perfect. Um, perfect. Yeah, 700 horsepower sports car conditions. I'm trying to think, what am I really looking forward to in 23? A lot of good stuff came out last year, like the GR Corolla, which I was really looking forward to, the Z06, mm-hmm. the Rivian R1S, um, the new Lotuses. I'm excited Lotus. to, Lotus. yeah, the Amira. I'm excited to drive Silverado EV, which I think is going to be like great. The um, new Colorado and Canyon also actually look very excited good. for those. Yeah. Um, it's weird. It, it feels like there was a huge crescendo in 21 and 22. Right. GT4 RS is already out. Yeah. I guess GT3 RS, that Dakar lifted thing, I think will be cool, but it's so niche that like, I don't really, you know, it'll be fun to review, but. Unobtainium. Yeah. It's, will you yeah. get a chance at the Ferrari SUV? Yeah, I guess sooner or later, but boy, that thing looks weird, doesn't it? Per- <laughs> yes. Per- well, I didn't even try to pronounce it. Persang, 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 I don't know. They got I, the name as wrong as they got last year's F1 season. So, <laughs> yeah, if Ferrari is not the same brand they were. Ferrari, man, two thousand mid two thousands Ferrari. They were winning. They had Schumacher. They came out with like the. They were still making stick yep. five nine nine. Mm-hmm. What a time! Yep. Yeah. It, this year, mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like everybody's kind of in limbo, waiting for all the manufacturers to go. Here's our new hot electric thing for twenty four. Yeah. You know, and it'll come out like. For, I guess if it launches next year, for 25, but. You know what I'm a little excited for? This is like relatively minor compared to a lot of stuff, but um, that the EV6 GT, the Kia EV6 GT, because mm-hmm. I like the EV6. I like how it looks and I like how it drives, but it's like kind of low on power. But they're apparently going to do one with like 550 horsepower or some insane, <laughs> ridiculous. Okay. So my weird automotive take on that is all of the press pictures of the EV6 GT are of it sideways, right? And I don't know like if you guys sliding, are, sliding, yeah, yeah, yeah. like drifting <laughs> or you know some. Okay, well, there, that's not an American. Find find nope. one that I'm talking about. <laughs> but, but no, the EV6 GT is supposed to be like the super hot, you know, like performance version. And I remember, and and you know, EVs now are like lux- They're luxury cars. They're quiet. They're calm. They're serene. They go good places. You know, like it, it does all the things that you want a luxury car to do. And I remember in like 2008 when Lexus released, or maybe it was 2007, that generation of LS of pictures of it sliding around the Nürburgring. And that was immediately what I thought. I was like, so they're taking the quietest, (laughs) most comfortable, best riding thing, and they're making it like a fuck all, enjoy yourself kind of thing. And that is awesome. Like that is yeah. all I wanted to do. And they, I think they have to prove to people, hey, this is more exciting than the prior one. So the best way to illustrate that in a photo. Yes. Boom. <laughs> but but all the outlets that have touched them too have been like, oh yeah, you just plant your foot and it's, you know, ass out. Interesting. Um, I, and- had a, I had a Stinger GT and I loved it. And I always felt, you know, it should have been, a crossover would have been cool because that's what everybody wants now. And I feel like this is that. And if you can slide it, all the better. Yeah, man, I'm so lukewarm on the Stinger GT. I wanted to love it so much. 
like my brother be like I loved, I loved mine i still think about it i still kind of wish that i had never gotten rid of it when uh, do we get the eb9 uh, is that this year is that even official yet yeah oh. yeah i think it's i don't know that they've shown pictures but i think it's like been disc- it's gonna like some big blocky thing i guess like, why do you oh, why do you need an ev9 you can go down and get a vinfast eight tomorrow uh, hard pass <laughs> sorry for shouting <laughs> they're here you know by the way speaking of infast i get an email the other day from byd are you aware of this company the chinese company they're, they're chinese yeah okay yeah. So, so they send me a note and they say hey we want you to test drive our cars i was like all right like i don't know where this is gonna go but mm-hmm. i'm interested especially if you'll send one to my house. And so they like, after some back and forth, they were like, you want to drive the BYD blah, 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 our flagship SUV or the BYD blah, 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 our mix. And I have no idea because I don't know anything about these cars. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'll take one of those. And so apparently they're going to send me one next week or the week after, which I'm I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, where is this even going to be plated? Like, is this, <laughs> yes, that, those are the names, the Han, the Tang. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, hmm. this doesn't seem... Like, obviously, I'm going to say what is needs to be said about the car. I suspect it won't be competitive, but we'll see. But, like, I don't know how the Chinese company is going to feel about me saying, like, if I have to get negative right. about it. Right. But at the same time, I don't even care because it's <laughs> what is um, Chinese people again. You're not going to care until they hack everything. <laughs> oh. 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 But I'm like, okay, like let's see what happens. Apparently, there, there, there's like an office in LA. I guess they're going to try to infiltrate the U.S. market, and so like we'll see how that shakes hmm. down. Interesting. What was the electric small electric sedan from like twelve years? Coda. Coda. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Reminiscent of that. We're like, here's our launch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was like. There's a guy on YouTube named his channel is called aging wheels and he has a coda and like is trying to keep it running against all odds oh, and it's quite an quite an entertaining thing if you're into like weird terrible cars i i, I mean that man my weird terrible electric cars makes me want to get like a tahoe hybrid or a yukon hybrid and just like document everything that fails <laughs> Those were weird, terrible cars. They were horrible. <laughs> Let's add 1,200 pounds to something. I already weighs a lot. Great idea. Eight, 18 hybrid badges. And... It was uh, the, the, the windshield one. The tr- yeah, it was uh, catastrophic. But you'd get less looks than you got in a smart crossblade. So. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I would no. love to get a crossblade and do like suspension, wheels, tires, and autocross it. Theoretically, the CO2 is pretty are, low, you know? There are a lot of uh, lifted smart 4.2s I've seen as well. Yeah, yes. we sold a lifted 4.2, and it was really cool looking. Um, that crossblade will probably end up with Ivanhoe, by the way, so maybe you can go check it out. I don't, I'm, I don't want to be a part of it until I'm ready for it, because um, I'm going to send it to Nantucket for the summer, so it's not going to come to California. So I'm going to send it from Florida to him, and he's going to store it for me. So you can pop up there and check it out. Okay. That, I, <laughs> what do you think of it? Bring a helmet. Nine minutes from his door. So if it ends up there, let me know. And uh, if it ends up in the end target, let me know. I'll make a trip. They've got some terrible. Uh, well, that, trust me, I drove the Peterson Museums, and I'll tell you, it is not worth it. It is not worth the trip anymore. Maybe the nine minutes, but that's the furthest I'd want to go for one. Oh, that's so bad. Maybe I'll maybe I'll buy another cheap via cross and we can have the, the world's worst Nantucket adventure. The cars. Dude, if you're in the market for via cross, there's one near me. It was not expensive uh text me i haven't made a terrible automotive decision you know what i accepted on the site um like last week i reviewed the the last via cross they ever made that like it was like iron man the perfect iron man one yeah and it's there's like a letter from isuzu that it's the last one (laughs) and all that and that guy submitted it to cars and bids and we took it i don't know where he is he might end up for all i know he might end up selling on craigslist you know or what keeping it or whatever but um but I accepted it the other day and really? I'm there. I, I didn't even look at his reserve. I was like, yes, this is the yeah. one. <laughs> I'm just super curious. What, what was the, the total number was like 4183 or something globally. It was really low. I mean, that's yeah. the same number of four GTs they made. Like it's a real special car. Like Crazy. It's a, man. Yeah. I, I there's no other vehicle in my history that I that I hated that much that I would love to own again. Like it's yeah. so 
such a stupid. They were cool. They still are. You see them in California here and there. Um, they're cool. Um, one of my one of my kids' daycare teachers drove a via cross for years, and I was, every time I would drop off, I'd be like, "Why is that in the parking lot?" I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's awesome, but like coolest daycare why? teacher ever. One of my kids. I could, see a, I could see a midwestern teacher driving that. Like I'm trying to inject <laughs> a little fun into my life. But God, you know, yeah. this is this is what I've got. You know, <laughs> have you guys had an X ninety yet? Yeah, we've had a couple X nineties. The problem with X nineties is they're all rough as hell. Yeah. And so, like, and they were they're just so cheap. One of the Rust. things we found is that like really cheap cars, they just don't have a good like sale. Like we can sell them, but then the question of whether the people follow through is so low. Hmm. Like a three thousand dollar car, you just have no buy in, and so. Follow through isn't like they place bids and then just aren't good for People the money. Like no, because, because like we'll, we'll charge their credit card, but it's it's the minimum, which is 225 bucks. And so a lot of times people are just like, yeah, I didn't actually want it. Screw it. And then they just like bail and it's not worth pursuing them because it's only $225. And so like cheap, it, I would run another X90, <laughs> but <clears throat> I would run another X90, but it would have to be like a nice one. And there are just no nice ones left. They're yeah, just, they yeah. don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was like That's the nicest one in the world, and even it only brought five. Repainted, very repainted. Repainted. It was a stick. I think this was a tool graph. Maybe they all were. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, what, uh, just desirable. Before we go, and we're we're, cool. we're coming up on two hours, which is which is a good show. <laughs> um, Lock. <laughs> aside from the crop, what have you bid it on on your own um, side? Other than that, I've started to get into. Oh boy. That's a good question. I can I only allow myself to bid on no reserve stuff, which kind of limits it. But sometimes I'll like do a backroom deal with the seller and be like, hey, listen, I kind of want this. If you'll run it no reserve, I'll give you a guarantee. Um, but often they stand up selling for more anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I've never bought a car on the site. I've tried, um, but I've never actually We're, bought a car on the site. So I really hope I get the cross blade, but I am not spending 55 for this thing. Oh, so no. <laughs> if, it, no, if it ends up, but I don't get it, then so be it. I, I love that. You just told that story because that is 100% people's he like hesitation towards no reserve. Yeah. You're like, I only bid on no reserve stuff and it always goes for more than what I would guarantee the seller in a backroom well, deal. Just, like think about no reserve. Like I beg people to understand, like actually no reserve just brings so much interest and I swear it brings more money. And we, our data shows that, but it's also kind of, it kind of feels salesy. So like we tell that to yeah. sellers, we're like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, when you see no reserve, you're like more into it. Like it gets more clicks. Like you're like, oh, this is selling. Let's go see what happens, you know? Right. And like um, this, there's a Land Cruiser right now for more than the Land Cruiser last week. And it's no reserve. I, there are so many of these on the site that you can do like one-to-one -one comparisons and a car will get two grand more with no reserve. There was one time when we had a Disco 2. This was like at the beginning, but we had a Disco 2 that sold for like four grand more than like an identical Disco 2 that had sold with the reserve. And we used to send that to everybody being like, here's an example of why you want to go no reserve. Um, but people are scared and I get it. But for these sellers, the sellers of stuff that I'm like really into, I'll be like, hey, look, go no reserve and like, we'll make sure. Um, but it's rare that I, that that happens. And in the end, they sell for too much anyway, which is Crazy. proof that it works. Crazy. True. Well, You're telling me I need to bid on Land Cruisers. Disco or two, Land Rovers. Disco. Disco. <laughs> sold, sold an AMG wagon early on that was Gulf Blue. It was the only one in Gulf Blue. And the seller... Want, well, he initially wanted no reserve and then he wanted like an 80 reserve and it was clearly going to sell for like 95 and i was like dude you go no reserve and i'll buy it for 80 if it doesn't make Seriously. it and of course it it sold for crazy factory money and, golf blue yeah yes this car it sold for crazy oh, money yeah. and then the guy who bought it made an instagram dedicated just to this car and he tags me in every post and like to taunt me like you <laughs> <laughs> that's uh oh, that's just evil that is uh. That was the tagging for taunting. That's perfect. <laughs> what in the like? Hi, Mercedes. Paint the sample. Yes, I want the color that I don't think your team has ever run. Right. It makes no sense, but yeah, it's cool. It, it's better than another silver one. It makes sense on McLaren and well, like, like a bunch of other the stuff. blue with the black cargo box. It's great contrast. Like it, it looks fantastic. Right? <clears throat> it's quite cool. And it's the factory AMG cargo box too. In other words, I overpaid for a cargo box. <laughs> I, <love that. laughs> oh. I paid 2x what I could have paid at Target. Oh, but it's AMG. That's fantastic. But it says AMG, so I'm cool. <laughs>
Oh boy. Well, sweet. Oh, thank man. Doug. Thank you so much for coming back. Yeah. I appreciate it. So Thanks, much. Doug. We thank really you for having me. It. I always appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I'm, uh, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. So you can rate and review the show on iTunes or oh God, I say iTunes every fucking time. I'm so Apple old podcasts. I don't have an iPhone. I don't care. Um, because I still have a toddler who I can hand my Samsung phone to in kids mode. <laughs> nothing, nothing is bricked when it's handed back to me. But yet everyone thinks I'm crazy because I make the bubbles the wrong color. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> mini rant. <laughs> no further comments. <laughs> you can like and subscribe on YouTube. We are there. You can follow Doug. It's at Doug DeMuro everywhere. Maybe not Mastodon or Truth Social or any of the other new ones. I don't know. <laughs> We haven't gotten oh, to me. Oh my God. No. Just find I him on Instagram. That. Find Doug on YouTube. That's all yeah. you need to do. Find <laughs> yep. Doug on YouTube. Yep. Uh, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is at no, not like the one from Friends. I fumbled over it, even though I've said it so many times. I'm at Overlanding Dad. That's it. That's our show. Thanks so much, Doug. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. See you guys.